Hey everybody, welcome back to Lee's Cliff. I'm your host, Matt. And I'm Tyler. Scott giggled right through the intro. Yup. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That's hilarious. Alright, it doesn't matter, I don't care. Alright, so, uh, this is the Linux cast. We, re- we talk about Linux things, usually, unless somebody uses some other stupid operating system. I don't to talk about that. Um, <laughs> seriously, I don't know what's wrong with you. Anyways, uh, that is... Uh, that is it for the show. We're gonna we're done. We're gonna leave now. Yeah, yeah. We don't have anything That's to talk it. about. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, uh, yeah. Anyways, this is the Lynx cast. I don't have any uh, focus on this at all. My week has been absolutely horrendous. <laughs> it's just been uh, work nonstop. So I told I I probably I think I talked to you about this last week off camera. Is where we had four people quit. Right. So mm-hmm. all of their work kind of got shoved off onto me and that fallout is still kind of happening. And it turns out you can't hire anybody right now. Everybody is quitting. Yep. Yep. <laughs> uh, so, um, which I don't even begin to understand, like whatever, but yeah. So I've been, I think I've written 270,000 words in the last two weeks. Ooh. Yeah. It, I don't, most of that was rewriting by the way. I, so it's not as bad as it sounds, but still it's not great really. um my fingers hurt okay mm. like that's the reason why i noticed when that new trackball started hurting my wrist because like for the most part ergonomics is fine like i have just a regular keyboard i don't have a split keyboard or anything but mm-hmm. when that started hurting my wrist because of the, it does a weird thing with your fingers you can get to control the ball like with these mm. and it just hurt my wrist so i stopped using it um, which is disappointing because it's really cool. Um, but the, also the track ball is not as nearly smooth, which is really weird for me. Like it's like kind of, kind of grainy, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, that's neither here nor there. So that's the reason why if we go through this podcast that I seem a little bit uh, disinterested <laughs> at times, yeah. uh, it's just because I have, my mind is on other things. So, uh, Tyler, what have you been doing? In Linux this week. Oh, in Linux. Yeah, well, I, 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 I'm going to make a new app. rule that you have to do at least one thing in Linux each week. If you, I don't care if you switch to Windows, but you have to do one thing in Linux each week. Okay, that's the well, rule. That's easy because not only am I wearing the Arco shirt, that doesn't I'm count. Using Arco. I've been using Arco. It counts. No, no, you, uh, you no, no. The using Arco part counts. The wearing the T-shirt doesn't count. That's like <laughs> that's like saying you wore a a, a, a Tennessee Volunteers t- uh, sweatshirt and um you played for the team. <laughs> you know those aren't the same thing. Just because you just because you own the jersey doesn't mean you're the running back. Okay. True. True. <laughs> true. But all right. So look, I have been using Arco and and wearing the T-shirt. It's been it's been really good. Today, for some reason, performance was not good during streaming. Valheim was terrible, and yeah, it was not it was not a good experience. And does do, when you just play, just play the game? Was does the performance fine? Because maybe it's possible that OBS was what's co- was causing your issues. Possibly, but. I doubt it, because, I mean, it, it's a weird, like, uh, before I moved up here, I had Arco with the um, experimental uh, AMD drivers, and everything was working perfectly fine while streaming and not streaming. I did a reinstall of Arco up here. Now, it's not fine at all. Why'd you have to reinstall just because you moved? Oh, well, because um, the first day I was up here, by the way, for anyone who's out of the loop, I moved up to Colorado to live with a buddy uh, uh, from the Discord, Scott. And um, yeah, so since moving up here, got up here instantly, we were like, you want to like, you want to spend the night in installing Gen 2? And so we did that. And surprise, surprise, it did not work out. <laughs> he is a bad influence on you. I'm going to just say this right now. Uh, installing Gen 2 and then, because you messed up your perfect install of Arco, and then because your perfect install has been ruined by Arch Center, I mean, uh, you're going to have to go use Windows? 
<laughs> I'm it, I'm tempted. I am tempted to go back. Just just because everything works really uh, performance wise works really well. Yeah. But yeah. I don't I know what to do it again. Person. It just <laughs> I don't I don't even know you anymore. Okay. I know I'm changing. But anyways, the rule is one thing in Linux every week. And I'm going to hold you to that. Okay? Um, and now, um, because I'm on your team here, and I'm just going to go ahead and state this, that using anything relating to WSL does not count as Linux. Sure it does. I actually disagree with you on that. Really? You use, if you use WSL, you're using the Linux kernel, it counts. Okay. So, so you're telling me you would be fine with like my one thing in Linux being just doing something in Ubuntu in Absolutely. WSL? Sure. Oh, really? Yeah. I mean, I would prefer you at, use like a properly installed <laughs> Linux distro, but... Exactly. You, yeah, I mean, <laughs> what am I going to do? I can't force you to use Linux. Um, I mean, it's just weird how like, I mean, I, I was going to assume that doesn't really count because you're still, I mean, it is Linux, but I mean... Microsoft is seeing everything that you're doing inside of it, so it's like, yeah. I mean, you apparently don't care, so I mean, what? I mean, yeah, good point. <laughs> what, what, what? It's not going to, it wouldn't count if it was for me, because I would hate that, but you seem to be perfectly fine in Bill Gates' pocket. When we were talking yeah. about it, that's what this is, right? He's he's paying you money to go back to crappy, or anyways. Not nearly enough. That's all I'll say. All right, so I don't even remember what I wrote down as what I did Linux this week. I don't think I actually wrote anything down other than um, a lot of work, yeah. Uh, so <laughs> I've been trying to set up a better share system between my computers. So for ages, I've just been using Samba. Like I just set up a Samba share on this main computer this because this computer's on all the time. And then I can get to all the main files and movies and stuff like that on all my other computers. And it works fine. And it's not going to go away, but with certain things, I would actually prefer to edit the files directly on this machine instead of having a share. Because sometimes they don't, for whatever reason, they don't sync up all the time. It's a little weird. So I've been messing around with doing some of the non-streaming stuff. Like if I'm like going to stream a movie to another thing, it has to be Samba. But for uh, SSH or for other stuff, I've just been using SSH, and that's been kind of working. Um, I know I've been trying to figure out how to go about creating a uh, like a NAS or something, uh, but that's gonna end up having to wait until I can actually afford hard drives. Because it turns out fucking hard drives are really freaking expensive. Yep. Like you can buy you can buy the NAS enclosure, or the hard drive enclosure for like two hundred bucks. You know that's not terrible or anything. You get like five bays, and then it's like a hundred dollars a hard drive. It's, yeah, and it's like yeah. No, I don't. I don't. I mean, it's it's not exactly the way I wanted to do it. But anyways, that's that's kind of what I've been focusing on. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm also still using Manjaro, so that's uh, that's going into its third week, and it is. I miss Arco. <laughs> I just put that. I miss Arco. There are certain things. So, the reason why. I switched to Manjaro in the first place. It was before I came up with the idea of doing like a, a comparison video. The reason why is because I thought it would fix my gaming problem. Because like, you were able to at least play games. And the performance might be bad, but at least you're able to start them. For me, anything that uses Proton in Arco would never start. It just would never launch. Mm -hmm. And I thought that by going to Manjaro, it would fix that problem, but it didn't. It does the exact same thing. Now, it works fine. It worked fine in MX Linux, which is hilarious. Um, so, excuse me. So, I switched to Manjaro really for no reason, but there are several things that just kind of bug me about it. Like, for whatever reason, trying to go through and get all the theming and stuff to work properly in DWM has just not been... Great. Also, the file picker. So I chose the KDE version, and if you choose the Plasma version of Manjaro, everything that has a Qt file picker uses the Qt file picker. So for like example, uh, Firefox has both a GTK and a Qt file picker, and it chooses which one to use based on what desktop environment you're using for the most part. 
right? And so it's chosen to use the cute file picker even when I'm in DWM. And the problem is, is that the, the file picker isn't going through and picking up the theme that I've set with Phantom. And again, not a big deal, but it's just something, one of those things that I notice and it drives me nuts. Um, I've also been having that same problem with a whole bunch of cute, pro cute apps where it just for whatever reason will not go through and remember the, the, the theme that I was picking, even though I've gone through and set the, set the environment variable that I need to set. Um, yeah. It's, it's a little weird. Also, um, that green flashing thing is going to drive me fucking bonkers. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's going to really drive annoying. me nuts. All right. Yeah. I, I should have just taken that two hundred dollars and just saved up a little bit more or whatever to get a DSLR or something. I don't know. I mean, that's probably what's going to happen. You'll probably return it and just save it up, then get DSLR. God, I don't want to do that. Well, I mean, I don't really w want to go over to Windows and talk about how how much of a good time I'm having, but then also at the same time. I'm going to send you a virus. I just want to play games. I'm oh, well, I mean, that won't be hard. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm going to send you a virus just so you can come back to Linux where there's no viruses. Uh, anyways, uh, that, is, uh, that is it for that section. Let's go ahead and move on to the contact information. If you want to get in contact with us, maybe you have a solution for this stupid green flashing. I'd love to hear from you. At LinuxCast on Twitter, subscribe to all of our audio feeds and stuff like that at LinuxCast.org. You can contact us via email, email at the LinuxCast.org. <laughs> You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. You can follow Tyler on YouTube and Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. YouTube is, is uh, um, youtube.com slash OG. I really do need to change that link in the in the show notes, but I haven't done it yet. So uh, you can also subscribe to all of both of our discords. Both of those links will also be in the video description. Also, there's a Telegram group that um, nobody takes part in. Like There's members there, but there's no talking. Uh, but it, it exists. Um, and you can also subscribe to LinuxCast at youtube.com slash LinuxCast. That is the contact information. That was the best contact information section we've ever had. So we're yep. moving on. Done. Perfect. You, you have a mic there. You can drop that for me. <laughs> oh, yeah. If I actually drop this, it'll be terrible. It'll just, it'll yeah. just be terrible. <laughs> everyone, everyone in chat will just scream. Like, why? Well, the poor headphone users will die. Yeah, but I mean, right. it was good for effect. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't even. All right, so that is uh, it for the contact information. We can go ahead and move on to the news section. So every single week, I mean, we're just flying through this, really. Um, mm -hmm. Every single week, we scour the internet for news from the Linux world that we can share with you and have a little bit of a conversation about before we jump into the main topics. So this week is no different. So Tyler, why don't you tell us what your news of the week is? Um, mine is a good and sad one. Um, so there, like you, I mean, especially if you're in the Linux space, you've probably heard of the GenePad A1, and it's one of these like Linux tablets. Um, I can't remember what the um, Linux distro it comes preloaded on uh, with, um, but it it has the more iOS kind of look to it. Um, but it's a it's a pretty nice device and the premium like price tag was a little high it was like 700 bucks now for the new year you'll be able to get it for 45 percent off which makes it below 400 dollars. which for a brand new nice tablet 11 inch tablet that's that's pretty damn nice with an amoled screen too um problem is though is the company might be going under um they're having downsizing and um I mean, it's also kind of obvious. It's very difficult to be a Linux hardware manufacturer in any space. So hopefully this sale will bring in a whole bunch of buyers and get them more exposure. There's no up. way at 45% off they're actually making any money on that hardware. There's exactly. Absolutely no way. No. Which um, is, again, sad. Yeah. But hopefully it works to get them exposure to get more sales down the line. Hopefully. Can, can I give them just one piece of advice? Don't call your thing Jingpad. Okay? <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, it's, I'm it's sure a it has, very... Um, 
I have I'm assuming it has something to do with their their name or something. I don't know, but um yeah, don't call it that. Call it, come up with something a little bit different. Yeah, um, because it 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 does sound like I, I I don't know why, but it does sound sketchy. It's one of those names where it's just it sounds like you're getting a cheap product. Like it, that's just what it sounds like. It sounds like another like off like off the shelf like off the f- factory floor like model that's kind of g- generic. It sounds like a name of something you'd buy for like a three or four year old child from like a. a Woot or AliExpress or something, you know. It's just, <laughs> yeah. It, it doesn't sound. I mean, and we know that's not the case. Like the the hardware looks amazing, and it looks like a freaking iPad, uh, mm-hmm. and it's cheap and runs. I've links, seen videos so it, on it, and it seems pretty damn good too. Like, but they chose a, a cheap name. Is what it feels like. It's what it feels like is a cheap name. So they need to rena- yeah. rebrand uh, something, literally anything other than that. I think that's. Yeah, I don't yeah. know that uh, I can say that that's their problem. Like that's the reason why they're having going through these issues, but it can't have helped. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Uh, I mean, just trying to trying to like tell your friend that you should check out the Jing Pad A one is kind of a. I mean, it doesn't just it doesn't roll off the tongue like an iPad. You know, like hey man, you should check out the iPad Pro. Like it's really nice. Like it just doesn't doesn't have that same premiumness to it. Yeah, it really doesn't. Um, it would be disappointed if they don't, you know, aren't able to continue on. No, I mean, I I really do wish them the best because their interface does look stellar. Um, I mean, might I suggest a company like System76 or uh, Slimbook or something like that purchase them <laughs> and fold them oh, in? Oh, yeah. That'd be cool. That'd be nice. Um, and, So that'd be interesting. All right, anyways, that is... Uh, I don't know if even at that price I'd buy one though. Maybe. I don't have to think about that. I got till February tenth. Oh, you could. Anyways, all right. So my my news this week is about our is about your favorite operating system and mine. Elementary O seven uh, will be based on Ubuntu twenty two point oh four, which is not surprising, but it'll also have GTK four apps and Power Profiles. The reason why I chose this was because, well, I don't know about you, but Oh, Elementary 06 took forever to come out. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm very much wondering if this one will also take a long time. So they've announced uh, several features. And will the software center <sighs> no, be fixed? It'll still suck. It'll still <sighs> suck. So Elementary 07 will come with GTK4 apps, uh, or G- will come with GTK4 natively. It doesn't say which applications will be transitioned over to that, as far as I'm aware. It says they're going working on porting a number of apps and desktop components to GTK4 uh, and Granite 7 and take advantage of newer features and improved performance. But it doesn't say all of them. So I'm assuming that this is going to be a transition that's going to take some time, just like it is everywhere else. Um, it also said that they're going to be uh, automatic updates in the App Center and uh, completely revamped music app. Those are the other things that they're going to be doing. Uh, I don't know that automatic updates, I mean, are... Is that something that people actually want when yeah. it comes to applications? I don't, I don't know, man. I, I genuinely don't know. I, d- I, don't I mean, know. It, it's one of these things that at this point, like, I just genuinely don't know what people want in, anymore. Because apparently, like, some distros are switching over to automatic updates, like, and you can opt out of them, but, I mean, it's just there, and people seem to like it. So, I don't know. <sighs> I, I thought I thought as a majority, even you know, beginner friendly distros would be uh, against the whole idea, but it seems like everybody's just in in for it. Like, I guess I I, I guess more people are fine with you know, it just it the computer taking care of it for them. Well, I can see the appeal for new users. Like, if you set up something for your mom or your aunt or your grandma or whatever set this up for them they download apps all the time they don't know what an update is um you know this would keep their stuff up to date and stuff but at the same time those same people that you're setting this up for i mean chances are they aren't the most interested in getting the newest and greatest and most flashiest things so can you imagine uh setting this up for your mother 
and uh, she finds an application that she really likes, right? And it works fine for her. She's gone through and uh, learned all of the stuff that she needs to learn how to use it. And then uh, she sets her computer down when it reboots and does has done its updates. She comes back and the UI is completely different. And there's new features that she doesn't know how to use. And she's going to get on the phone and say, Hey, Tyler! <laughs> I'm sure she sounds exactly like that. Um, uh-huh. I can't get my voice to go up that high anymore. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I think I even had I think it even my voice even broke there for a second <laughs> I felt like I was going through t- puberty again <laughs> but anyways um, <laughs> she's going to call you and you're going to be like well you can't help it that's just the way it works you get automatic updates so I don't think that this it feels like not a great thing it's just no. I mean I'm assuming that you can turn that off but is this something we really want? I mean, I, I guess it's. Uh, I mean, it's by a person to person basis. And, and option, but I just think overall, I don't. I, I just. I don't think the Linux community is one of those ones where we're like, yes, automatic updates. Yeah. I don't know. It just. It seems. It feels weird to me. But maybe no. that's. A, maybe that's the power user. I mean, maybe uh, regular new users are perfectly happy with it. I don't know. And and maybe even as a power user, it just takes a few distros just trying it out for a little while to figure out which different distros communities do actually like it. Because I'm sure some might actually enjoy it, while others despise it. I mean, that's definitely how the Linux space works. You know? could, be. could be. And uh, on that note, we might as well go ahead and transition to, into the main topic. So this week's topic was mine. And it's got... Uh, with my interaction with several Linux community and actually creating a small community of my own, I, I've been thinking for a while about the idea of community and the Linux community specifically. And to put it bluntly, the Linux community has a rather horrible reputation. Right? Yeah. It has a very, very uh, prickly uh, re- reputation in certain parts. And this was kind of on display in its worst form uh, when Linus Tech Tips did it, did their, his um, his challenge or whatever, and you know it just brought out the trolls. So it made me start thinking: Is the Linux community, if you can say that the Linux community is actually a thing, is it toxic? Now, I don't know whether or not that's too general or not, and maybe we can talk about whether or not it's just maybe just parts of it are toxic but that's the question for today do you think that the linux community has uh toxic elements oh yeah i mean i think it'd be a complete false statement to say that there's not toxic elements in the linux community um i i posted a video not too long ago um uh like my journey back to linux and i got some pretty nasty comments on on that video which was literally just a video of t- t- like me talking about um like why i was using linux or why i was using windows like what got me started using it and um like my experience with it and then like my experience leading up uh towards me ending up back on linux using uh at that point fedora and um i got I mean, I got a lot of messages that were, I mean, one, like we went back and forth for a while. And, um, I mean, at one point this guy told me he was like, I mean, his problem was that I wasn't, I didn't send bug reports for stuff. And I mean, look, it's not like I haven't sent bug reports before, but it's no one's responsibility to send bug reports. Um, and also there are some things where like, especially when it comes to a game, like where do you send the bug report to? Like you, you can't really send it to the game devs. Do you send it? Do you send it to Steam? Do you send it to like Proton? Do you send it to Linux? Like uh, your distro? Like where do you send the bug report to? Um, but anyway, um, I mean, at one point he told me that like I should just piss off and use Windows, and um, uh, I can't remember like he said something else to it. Like he tried to like belittle me or, or, or something. I'm like, dude, like that is the prime example of like what you shouldn't do. Like, I mean, if you care about Linux, like that's how you, that's, I mean, you are behaving as exactly the type of people that give Linux a horrible name and a horrible reputation. Like, 
Um, so yeah, I mean, there are definitely those elements in Linux, but it's not everybody. And it's definitely not the majority of people. Um, especially, I mean, there are some Linux distros that will obviously attract more toxic people. Um, and then there are some distros that just seem to be filled with like nothing but super nice people. Um, so, uh, I don't know, I, but I, I mean, you could say the same with, I mean, obviously Windows users or Mac users, there's so many of them, there's going to be assholes in there. I'm just, I mean, when you get any group of people together, you're going to have some, some people who are just bitter, jaded, and use whatever they're interested in as an outlet to like just share that discomfort and unhappiness with others. So, yeah, I, mean, I think I agree with that. I, I th my biggest issue here is that there are certain topics that kind of bring that out in all of us in the Linux community. I think that every one of us that truly uses Linux and has a, a, a like a stake in the community that has gone through, they've dedicated themselves to using Linux full time. Uh, they they hate Windows with a passion. They always want to use as much software as possible. They hate the fact that there's a green flashing on my screen all the time and can't get fixed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those type of people, and that encompasses a vast majority of the people in the Linux community. And while most people, I feel, most people that I've interacted with have been very good and well-intentioned and helpful uh, and there have been those people who are assholes all the time. That's just mm. their nature. Uh, they, it's the way they interact on the internet. They tend to be just assholes 24-7. Uh, but there's also the tendency of people who get very passionate about the things that they like. So, for example, I like mm. Arco Linux, and I like to defend Arco Linux. So when Zany over there talks about how Arco is not treating him well sometimes. It makes me very <laughs> upset and makes me want to defend Arco Linux to the death and uh, drive to Colorado and strangle him with a chicken. Um, <laughs> I don't know where that came from. Just those murderous tendencies, I suppose. The poor hen. <laughs> you feel bad for the chicken. <laughs> I mean, I'm not that important. That poor chicken, no. Oh. Anyways, the, the 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 thing is, there is like we we all kind of get attached to the things in the distro and the desktop environment, the window manager and the software that we use, and even amongst ourselves, we infight amongst what is better. So, uh, you're a KDE guy. I'm a GNOME. Guy. No, I can't even say that loud. Of course, I'm not a GNOME guy. <laughs> no, it's like, I can't even say that with a straight face. But but you get the idea. Like everybody has their thing that they are passionate and stuff. And it it becomes really hard for us to say, well, you know, just because I like plasma so much doesn't mean uh, somebody else can't like GNOME. You know, there's no, there's no, oh, it's not hard. Uh, it, it it becomes hard to empathize with with people who use different things. And no, well, it come it becomes very tribal. And it's because we're yeah. there, there's so many options. And you do want to defend it. Um, I mean, I, I, I completely agree with that. And one thing that you said that's like very important to touch on is there are definitely uh, a small minority of people in the Linux space that are only using Linux because they do hate Microsoft or hate Windows. And I mean, if that's the only reason that you're using something or passionate about it is just predicated off of hate, um, and that's not really a solid position to have. And it also kind of makes you have more asshole tendencies. Mm -hmm. So I don't hate Microsoft. I honestly... I do. Like, <laughs> I'll just say like, I do. I, I, I don't hate Microsoft. I think that they're a company that is... Uh, does what a company's supposed to do is make as much money as humanly possible. That's what companies do they're not a not a non-profit organization i mean i can't i cannot disagree with that that is a hundred percent true and that's exactly what they're supposed to be so you it'd be like uh, hating a dog because he barks you know that's what dogs do you know <laughs> and it's just no. the, the, that's the way nature has intended them to be so i don't hate microsoft i hate some of the things that they've they do but 
there's a reason why I don't use Windows. So I like I don't like telemetry, but I use Google services, so I can't really say that I hate it so much that it, you know I'm a paranoid person because of it. I just it's something that's always in my mind. The biggest thing that always always bothered me about Microsoft has been uh, they tend to want to use their market cap or their market share to force people to do things. So for example, this whole Edge thing where they don't want you to switch away from Edge and they've made it really super hard to change your default browser. That whole thing, that bothers me. The, 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 like, I'm already using your freaking spyware. Let no. me choose the browser I want to use. So that's those are the biggest reasons why I don't like to use Windows. Also, updates. Like, I want you to be able to choose when I do my updates. That's the whole thing. Like, no. I don't want you to restart in the middle of me doing something. It's just so fucking stupid. Besides the point, but I think you're right, is that um, it, tribalism, it, it becomes so tribal is a very good way to, to describe it. And we've, we've talked about that before. We talked about how uh, everybody, you know, all become team players and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But what I w wanted to talk about more is that the result of that, like people tend to when they are passionate about something and truly believe in using something and have become fanboys of that something, they tend to ignore human decency when they come across somebody who uses something different. They they forget that it's okay for that person to like something different and are instead uh, come across in either two, one of two ways. They either try to convert the other person into using what they like um, which is okay, I suppose, as long as you do it in a polite, you know, way and no. uh, know when to stop. You know, obviously, don't be harassing. Like, don't come into my content, my comments all the time, and say, "Hey, you should use Gentoo. Hey, you should use Gentoo. Hey, you should use Gentoo." Uh, the, no, I should Matt. use Gentoo. <laughs> Matt, yeah, be careful there. I know somebody. You might be talking about yourself there a little bit. <laughs> hey, I know someone who comes into my chat all the time <laughs> screaming Gentoo. <laughs> That, that's because I'm a troll and <laughs> it's supposed to be funny. <laughs> oh, it is. So, so, so there's that one path, right? That they, they try to convert you. The other path is that, that they don't even care that they're, they know you're, they're never going to convert you into something. So they just demean you and, and, try yeah, and to, shame you, try to uh, call you names and bully you and all this stuff just because of the thing that you like that they don't happen to like or the thing that they like and that you don't like. It's the dumbest thing in the world. And it's, yeah. it's, the problem here is that as much as we talk about the way that the Linux community is about this, like it seems to be exacerbated in the Linux community because there's so many options. Everybody gets to yeah. hang out in their own club. Like you're, if, you know, you're. I mean, there's more to argue about. Like, yeah. can we, I mean, what are you going to argue about when it comes to Windows? Like, what taskbar are you using? Like, come on, there's, there's no, there's really no choices. Like, well, what are you going to argue about? Richard in the chat says you use Gen two. <laughs> of course, because of course, of course. Um, so it it does get exacerbated in the Linux community, but I don't think that it's unique to us, right? No. Like we, we like you said before, there's going to be assholes in every community. There's just more opportunities for for it to show in the Linux space. Because I mean, honestly, like even though Windows has much more of the market share, Windows users don't really talk about Windows nearly as much as, I mean, unless you're working or you're trying to get to working at Microsoft, like most people aren't really talking about the underlying system. Here in Linux, everybody is. Yeah, like, I mean, everybody Most is. people who use Windows just want to get into Google Chrome and browse their way to the their porn sites or whatever it exactly. is they do. Yeah. You know, or they, or the, oh, they use important. Microsoft Office yeah. or whatever. And they just use their, it's a tool for them. It's not, you know, a passion. Mm -hmm. That with with Linux it is a hobby uh, or it probably starts off as a hobby for most people and then they get into it and you know can make it into something else. Um I I'm, I'm also I think one of the reasons for this and I'm going to say this with all the love in the world. But the people who use Linux, not all of them, but a lot of the people who use Linux tend to be more anti-social, less pe people who don't get out as much, people who uh, tend to focus more on the the things on their internet lives than in you know actual life. So that they go through and tend to uh, Linux kind of has filled the void for them. Like I guess I'm not talking about everybody. 
uh, and, no. and can kind of talk about this from personal experience. Like a lot of the technological stuff that's in my life has filled voids of other uh, other areas. But the, the point is because mm -hmm. Linux has become more important to them than other things, they are more defensive of it when people criticize it. So no. um, my advice for those people would be to go get laid. But yeah. Or just go outside and touch some grass. You know, yes, just just go outside, <laughs> touch some grass. You'll um, be fine. And unless unless you're in uh like where I'm at, and there's like uh, 24 inches of snow on the ground. Yeah, I was about uh, to say. In, I in which get, case, there is no grass. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get used to being out here. I just thought about it. I'm like, shit, I haven't seen a blade of grass since I've been out here. Uh, might, might be possible. Like we got mountains thing. of snow though. You could suffocate yourself in a snowbank. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, so, it, I don't know. So, the, to go back to the original question, I bumped the mic. Of course I did. I had to change the ears around because the headphones still are painful. Anyways, the, the to go back to the original question, Are there is the Linux community toxic? I don't think that... It is toxic as a whole, but everybody has the ability to be toxic in in certain ways. Like they go through because of that a tendency to become a fanboy of things and become defensive over the things that you like. Everyone has the tendency to uh, veer towards inappropriate behavior towards other people on the internet. It's just something that happens. It's a kind of the nature of the internet. Um, no. So the guess the question is, then what do we do about it if we all have this, you know, tendency? I mean, really, I don't know, man. That's a that, that that's a tough question because really, in all honesty, like ignoring it is not really a solution. Like, and I mean, I don't want to sound confrontational because I don't think that's like that's not what I'm saying, and also not what I'm implying. But, like, you kind of do have to call it out. Like, when someone is behaving that way, like, it just, it has to be called out. Because it's not, it's not okay. And if you just leave it there and ignore it, there's a lot more people that will come in and see that and be like, okay, so that's the acceptable behavior in this community. Or that, or not, not even be interested in interacting with other people who use Linux or may not even be interested in using Linux itself just because that's the type of people who use it and that's their kind of mindset and kazoom type Scott sneezed <laughs> oh it's interesting having a roommate now every but yeah <laughs> every time I hear somebody <laughs> say bless you or kazoom type it reminds me of a book by R.L. Stein I don't know why it popped in my head oh <sighs> Now, now you're gonna make me get interested in watching some goose goosebumps later. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, I'll, completely off topic. Arl Stein did goosebumps and Fear Street. Everybody knows this, right? But he also created. He also had one adult book, and that was yeah. He wrote it for adults, and it was blatantly for adults. It had very it, several very explicit uh, sex scenes in it. But, um, oh. <laughs> uh, anyways, the whole premise of the book is that there, there's demons in everybody, but they escape the body by uh when you sneeze <laughs> that was the whole premise of the oh, book oh, uh yeah. yeah he never wrote another uh, adult book as far as i know <laughs> <laughs> it, it was not very good um anyways <laughs> you, get to, you can tell when we've man managed to end the get to the end of the topic we just managed yeah. to veer off to the side um yet and also just also on that same topic it, uh the fear street series when i was like a, a teeny bopper like 12 or 13 favorite series i love that and what's, what's hilarious is like those are horror books right horror books um they're all exactly the same now but they, like, looking back on it they weren't very good books but at that time you know whatever um those but i, I can't stand horror now like to me it's so fucking stupid really every single horror movie is just i, I laugh at half of the shit okay hold on hold on you're saying you laugh at half the shit have you seen hereditary no, I don't watch horror movies at all. Like, I, I can't okay. Okay. stand any of it. Like, You think you're going to laugh at this movie? Watch it. Just watch it. I have a sister. Like, wait, hold on. Do you have any siblings? Well, yeah, they're all older than me. Oh, 
okay well i have a younger sibling in this movie i'm not kidding like it's a horror movie the horror is 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 pretty good but dude when i say it traumatized me like holy crap it is one heck of a horror movie yeah i don't really get traumatized by anything like if you, you watch any of the the texas chainsaw massacre stuff like there was oh one... th- no th- uh, yeah those are not scary to me, no, no. Th- like there's the one with jessica bill back in the early 2000s maybe the 90s or something like that but anyway uh the moment where her boyfriend or the the guy is wearing her boyfriend's face like like that's just a stupid movie (laughs) yeah every time i come back that's just stupid and and when you watch those movies like what kills me is like i see like 80 scenes where i'm like okay if you just started running in that direction i guarantee you'd live like i can just point to one direction just start running that way don't don't stop for any reason the, i guarantee the you'll live the best movie the best horror movies i've ever seen were the scary movies <laughs> the ones that called oh dude those those, those yeah. are so good. Um, and, and that's just because the, they're comedies. They're not scary. <laughs> yeah. Dude, the, the guy with the messed up hand and he grabs like mashed potatoes and tries yeah. it and he's like, you want some? <laughs> oh, my favorite part, one, my favorite movie of those is the fourth one. Uh, <laughs> there's a moment in there where they're, they're watching, like there's a TV in the background or there's like a news report. It says, uh, this is Detroit before the alien attack. And then it shows... Like it, there's like buildings on fire and stuff like that, and then it shows Detroit after the alien takes same exact scene just but with aliens. <laughs> it's so good. Uh, and, and then uh, the, when the main character um, is uh, trying to escape the city or whatever, and he gets in the car, but he, somebody else is trying to come with him, but the car door is locked, and, and he goes, "I'm gonna." count to three damn it you're three or my three because he keeps pulling the card the lever when he's on three and the car door's still locked and it wouldn't come open uh, <laughs> oh it's so good um god i can't i'm so sad that leslie nielsen died man it was a good actor yeah uh, mm-hmm. man also just in case anyone is completely out of the loop i'll just go ahead and lay this one on you again this is completely off topic and everything but Betty White recently passed away. Like, just just in just in case anyone lives under a rock, um, if you don't know who Betty White is, screw you. Find out. Um, you have free time. <laughs> Use it. <laughs> Betty White's awesome. Uh, and yeah, like that one. I was like, damn. Oh. Like, this year has not been Betty good White. for celebrities because we, no, we it lost has not. Betty White, Bob Saget, John Madden is gone. Um, Several Neil other. Young took his took all of his music. I, I don't use Spotify, but dude, for everyone who uses Spotify, all of his music's gone. I love Neil Young. Like, oh. I mean, it's not like he's gone or anything. He's not like he dead. Died, you can but, just switch to a different yeah. streaming service, Tyler. It's not the same. Okay, Look, I don't down. use it, but I know so many people <laughs> use Spotify, and they're like, "Damn it!" Now I have to go like pay for another subscription or something. Switch to Deezer and pay for the yearly subscription. You'll save like twenty bucks a year. Isn't Deezer the one where it's like kind of all pirated? No, no, it's exa- oh. it's exactly oh, okay. like Spotify. Oh, it's just a different service. Man, I'm thinking of. Uh, I, think I saw t- some I think video. You're talking about Napster. No, there's one that I saw. I think it was DT or somebody did a video on it where it's like it, it, it essentially just pirates all the music. Oh yeah, I, I saw the title of that. I didn't watch that video, but I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Meatloaf too. Meatloaf is, is dead. Oh man! <laughs> and, and yes, Betty White was one of the last gold, or was the last golden was the, girl. The rest of those, the golden girls, they were all really old when they were golden girls. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, the fact that she lasted so much longer. Um, but look, hey, I'm a guy, and I'll freely admit, Golden Girls, good show, good show. For, that that whole era was filled with good, like, TV shows. Um, we used to watch a show with Dick Van Dyke called uh, Diagnosis Murder. Like it's a stupid show nowadays, but never heard of it. Uh, it was one of those. They just don't make. There are too many procedurals on TV nowadays. Is mm-hmm. the problem. So, um, yeah, God, we really have gone off the rails. <laughs> yes, we have. <laughs> it's, I guess we should like try and get on, back on topic, but it's it's Scott's fault. He sneezed. And you said kazoo <laughs> tight, so I had to bring up R. L. Stein, and then just kind of devolved from there. Uh, <laughs> I can't help it. Um, I don't even know what the title of that R.L. Stein book is anymore. I'm pretty sure I don't even own it, which is stupid because I keep all of my books, but I'm pretty sure I got rid of that one. 
Uh, oh man, I get I get rid of my books as soon as I'm done reading them. That's why I can like when someone asks me like how many books have you read or like what books have you read, I'm like oh I, I have no idea because I just give them back. I mean I used to have a library card that was awesome. Just go down there grab books, but you know I that was a also card before too. And we often got books from the library, uh, but when I own a book, I keep it. Um, but n- nowadays it's all digital. Like I just yeah, like now you just get audio books. Like, yeah. that, that's, like, what, so, that's what like I you do. don't like, even have to read. Somebody's telling you a exactly. story. <laughs> like that's 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 like I feel so bad about it because it feels like I'm like I'm losing something. Like my ability. But to then read. also, <laughs> yeah. But then also at the same time, like it kind of like when you think about it for a second, it kind of changes everything. Like you don't need to be able to like you don't have to be able to learn to read to be able to get very intelligent. With, like, the amount of quality, very intelligent, like, podcasts there are. Like, you could listen to plenty of great guys. Like, Lex Friedman's a great one. Like, you can listen to very intelligent guys um, discuss very, very just um, deep conversation. Do or, us all a favor and don't listen to Joe Rogan, okay? <laughs> I listen to Joe Rogan, okay? Just, I like him. He talks to, to a lot Rogan. of interesting people. I don't care. <laughs> he's, I, he's always, I don't care about his misinformation. That's not why I'm telling you to do this. But for the most part, he just drives me nuts. Um, uh, I like it. The same thing. I mean, I don't care. Same thing with Adam Carolla. Do you ever listen to Adam Carolla? Mm-mm, no. Um, he's like the granddaddy of of of, yeah. of podcasting, right? And he's like one of the biggest podcasters. But some of his his stuff that he talks about is just really weird. Uh, I can't. Yeah, I, I've I've never been interested in him, like that much. But I mean, the reason I like listening to Joe Rogan is because he's the only guy out there who has like podcasts with like just like UFO guys and. And then the the next podcast is you know like Brett Weinstein was like some highly educated professor like what are you like how do you go from the two like what's that's the thing like, how do you that's I think that's what most people don't understand about I mean don't understand about Joe Rogan is that it's not a I don't know what he believes when it comes to this COVID stuff I don't oh yeah I don't you, I don't think it matters all he does he, he's like the the clickbait guy he I mean it's not really clickbait but it's the same thing he he wants to be as extreme as possible take as many different and well yeah he'll just talk to both both sides yeah. like and that's the thing you can't tell which side he's on because when he talks to both he's pretty indifferent and you're like okay uh, what like uh, I, I don't know. It's just conversations, but also at the same time, you're you're kind of like, uh, do you have a side? Like, do you do you have any bias whatsoever? Like, you've got to have a bias. Like, come on, bro. The, the the best clip I saw of him recently was Bill Burr on his podcast, just laying Ooh. into Joe Rogan about his about the COVID stuff. It was funny. Uh, Dude, Bill, I love Bill, Bill Burr, man. Bill Burr is not one to be censored about anything. That man, some of his comments no. about women, just <laughs> like, like, like some of his older stuff. Like he's like, why do we even need women? <laughs> yeah. like, okay. Dude, like it's it's amazing that Bill Burr like has has had like pretty long successful relationships. Like that is like when you hear him talk. Like sometimes you're like, man, this guy. If this guy can can survive in, in a relationship, there is no way I can't. No, right, right, right. Yeah. like seriously, how has this guy ever had sex? Right, yeah. <laughs> uh, like Jesus Christ, he, he some of the stuff, but hilarious, man. He's so funny. Um, anyway, uh, he has he has a bit about the Titanic, which just always makes me just laugh out loud. Anyway, and to glow sec, no, I'm not pro illiteracy. I'm just saying, hey, for the illiterate audiobooks are kind of awesome because you can learn a lot without having to learn to read also you learning languages learn to read. is great through audiobooks Ooh. like if you want to learn spanish listen to some spanish books you're not going to understand half of it but that's you'll, how you learn you, i mean you'll get along um especially if you can do like where you can switch between english and spanish like re, like listen to some of it in english then go back listen to spanish vice versa like yeah that's a good way of learning but then again, now we've got like learning apps that cost like nothing, it's like 99 cents for like a whole month. Well, and you, you can, can use it nonstop. You can use that Duolingo on your phone for free. Like it has an app. Oh, really? Yeah, it has in app purchases and stuff, but you can learn the language pretty much for free. If you want more languages, you have to pay, but the main hmm. languages are free. Oh, now, I don't know if okay. it works or not. I've, uh, I took well. Six, I mean, I'm terrible at learning languages, so I, I doubt it works. Six, six, I took six semesters of Spanish in college now granted excuse me i've been out of college since 2010 so i've been out of college for 12 years 
So I don't... I feel like I don't remember very much Spanish, but every time I hear somebody talking Spanish, like on the television, like, oh yeah, I, rem- I, I, I understood that. Mm-hmm. Now I couldn't pronounce it. I can't roll my R's worth a damn. Like, Same. Like, like rolling my R's, it just sounds like I, I, I have... A, I spit all over things and it's like, it's not pretty. <laughs> so you don't want me to speak Spanish at all, but I can, I can understand some of it. Like, so at least that six, six semesters of Spanish actually paid off for at least a little bit. I can at least understand it. Uh, I can ask where the bathroom is also. Cause they do kind of drill that into you. Um, no, just because I care. Do you want to go onto the apps of the week? Yeah, I think we probably should do that. Should we? Cause uh, I know, I know you have to go at some point. Um, yeah, we should do that. So Tyler, uh, uh, all right. So uh, is the Linux community toxic? Uh, it can be, I think is the answer to the question. Yeah. Uh, all right. Can be. Moving on to the apps week. So every week we go through, uh, and ha- have apps pick something or the other. We still don't know what to, co- what to call it. Eventually we'll come up with a name. Probably not. Uh, probably about the same time there's an actual website i'm just gonna put that out there uh <laughs> anyways, oh that's right we didn't even talk about that yeah yeah i, I didn't make don't any. worry don't worry we'll bring you something by don't worry i didn't don't make worry. any yeah. progress on the website this week yeah i know you've been busy as shit <laughs> so a, like we'll just breeze on past it anyway so tyler uh your thingy of the week yes uh it's um that thing in KDE that drops down that terminal, um, Yaquakwe, um, or what? However, I'm gonna, pa- I'm gonna pause to... you right there. It's just called Quake. Quake. That's what the, somebody in the I I mis- I did the exact same thing you just did. You Quake, you Quake, Guano. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It reminds me of Ace Ventura. <laughs> Guano. Hello, bat poop. Does that ring a bell? <laughs> Anyways, no. uh, uh, supposedly it's pronounced Quake. Whether or not that's true, that's, that's, a, that's a lot of horseshit. Quake is spelled with a Q. I know that's what I said, but what, how, how am I supposed? Probably something to do with uh, uh, um, uh, trademark or something. I don't know. Yes, in, in the chat too, they said Quake. sounds good. All right, all right, well, fine. Okay, well then, Quake uh, is is my thingy of the week. Man, it is just great. It, it is it is really nice. Like, just have it set to a key binding, and you instantly get your drop down terminal. Um, it's always there. It is it's just s- scratch pads. That's what that is. That's a scratch pad. No, no. Yeah, it is. It's man. different. It's exactly. It's a. I know. The literal I, definition I, I, of scratch pad. What are you talking sh- about? Sh- <laughs> <laughs> it's, not, it's different. I'm gonna be a. I'm gonna be toxic here for a minute and just say you're stupid. <laughs> it's a freaking scratch pad. <laughs> no, it's different. It's different. All right, and I agree with you. That is good, but um, if you use DWM, you don't actually have to have it. You could just use a scratch pad. That's true. That's true. That's true. <laughs> okay. But then again, at that point, you're using DWM. You know, I that came out of my mouth like it was, like it could have been a disc, but it's not. DWM so good. It is using DWM. Is so good. Awesome. All right. So my thingy of the week is tab groups. Now, this is not a specific tip. But if you're using a Chromium-based browser, I'm actually, I'm wondering. I'm give me just a second. This is gonna be funny. I, I just want to check because I'm pretty sure. Um, it doesn't matter. I, I was gonna check and see if I, I'm pretty sure I used this one last week. <laughs> 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 I, like I'm pretty sure I'm thinking that I, I used this last week. Um, Well, hey, man, if you like it that much, why not? I, I, I'm just curious now that this is this is uh, scintillating television. All right. Yes. Look, chat. This is live research being done right now. Yep. You're getting it. You're, you're getting information fresh, hot off the plate. OK, now I used Goyo last week. OK, I don't know why I thought I did this. Anyways, tab groups. <laughs> you can tell I just have not had enough sleep this week, like four hours all week. Mm-hmm. Um, anyways, um. Uh, Anyway, so basically what tab groups are is exactly what the name says. You uh, group tabs together, and uh, you can sa- wow. you can either save them for later or you can leave them open, which is what I do. And uh, if you're on a Chromium-based browser, you have tab groups built in. You should consider yourself very lucky. Especially, this is revolutionary for people who you have like 30, 40 tabs open at a time, and they mm. can tend to keep them open. That's how like they save mm. stuff like... 
I'm sure if I were looked at my mother's laptop right now, she'd probably have 140 tabs open. She always mm-hmm. does this. Like that's just the way she, she she knows how bookmarks work, but she doesn't want to you know use them. Uh, but so she just keeps all the tabs open all the time, and every time she use, loses the tabs. Oh, she freaks the fuck out. <laughs> she just <laughs> seriously, she loses her shit whenever she loses the tabs. So, um, tab groups allows you to go through and save the tabs and categorize groups and be very organized. Uh, Chromium has this built in, but Firefox does not. I've switched back to Firefox this week, by the way. Uh, I mm-hmm. should have put that in the thing of the section at the beginning. Section at the beginning, by the way, is what I was meaning to say there. Uh, but anyways, uh, there is a a, a a couple extensions that you can use to get tab groups in Firefox and they're just as good in Firefox with an extension as they are in Chrome. You should use them if you use tabs. So, Or you could just, you know, learn how to close them. Fuck you, Tyler. <laughs> Nobody asked your, <laughs> your freaking <laughs> opinion. <laughs> this, is, this is definitely the best podcast ever. <laughs> <laughs> just, just fuck off right wherever you came from. Uh, just me sitting over here with my my humble four tabs open. You know? Four tabs. Okay. Fuck off. I'm gonna get fucking. No worry. You don't. You, you don't. You don't have to count them. All right. So there's. Uh, let's see, there's four. Uh, another four. Fifteen. Another four. Uh, so that's uh, so 12. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. Uh, 24, 25, 26. I have 26 open right now, which is pretty, pretty low. Um, anyways. Damn, man. What do you want from me? You oh, me wait. To... Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I have five tabs open, not four. My bad. My bad. Oh, you want to 27. I also have the chat open on this one over here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Why use See, Chromium? I mean, that's when... why you need so many workspaces. Why why use Chromium when Brave exists? And the reason why you'd use Chromium... Brave is Chromium. Like what? You can use either one. They both are moderately meh, in my opinion. Wait, but Brave is Chromium. Like, it's I, just I, got different extensions at the moment. And crypto not. And crypto, yeah, and crypto, crypto added in because who doesn't love bat? I mean, who doesn't have a shitload of bat on hand? Yeah, I mean, you know me. I'm just bad rich over here. Yeah. <laughs> I just lost a program I for his, my tab addiction. I, the, th- the, the stupid thing is, is I used to be the guy, like Tyler, the asshole over there, who only had four <laughs> yeah. tabs. Um, and then I started using Chromium. Because <laughs> apparently... And then, the, and then the addiction spiraled out of control. And look, guys, I can't force him to go into rehab. All right? I can't. It's so cool... To be able to have an ideas group where I just shove all of my video ideas right into that tab group and they just stay there. Now, I suppose if you have like 4 gigabytes of memory, this is not a great thing. But I have 64 gigabytes of memory to burn, you know? Well, I got I to gotta use it some way, otherwise... Yeah. otherwise <laughs> I, I understand. You, you're you a big roller. Well, I what, uh, what I was going to say roller. is, um, have you ever seen 40 Old Virgin? With uh, Steve Carell, yeah. there's a moment he's like he, he's like in a, a group or something. I don't remember what the situation was. But he goes, is, "Is it true if you don't use it, you lose it?" <laughs> <laughs> so, so with the memory, it's like if you don't. Tr- obviously, he's talking about his penis, but <laughs> but uh, in my case, I'm talking about the memory. <laughs> uh, uh, Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> Dude, yeah. See, I mean, I I, I don't know. I God, just that was a good movie. Yes, it was. And they, they crash into crash into the car. God, that fucker came out of nowhere. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so good. Oh. Yeah. All right, that is it for us on this podcast. We gotta stop this. Otherwise, we're gonna say you're talking no. about movies the entire time, which we basically did, anyways. Yeah. Um, uh, for those of you interested in hearing me talk about movies all the time, I have another podcast. It's called The Three Cast. I will leave a link to that in the video description once this goes up as an edited version, so you can go through and watch that. Uh, that's done with my friends uh, uh, Vince and Ricky. We do that about once a month. Our next one we're going to be watching is called Encanto. It's a Disney movie. Ooh, okay. I did not choose that film, by the way. That was uh, the other. T- the other two gentlemen that do that with me are both fathers. So every once in a while, they'll choose a video that they watch with their children. So we- that's what we're going to be doing uh, next. Yeah. Uh, 
Lynn Manuel Miranda, I believe, wrote that film. So it should be interesting. Anyways, uh, that is it for us on this time. Before I go, I should take a moment to um, thank our current patrons. Today, Devon, Patrick L. Primus, Marcus, Megalyn, Jackson, Knife Tool, Steve Vice, Albert, Gary, Lennox, Garrick, Mitchell, Art Center, Carbon Dead, Jeremy, Sean, Odin. I don't know why I always mess up Jeremy, Sean, Sean, Odin, because I think that they joined in opposite order, so I switched them around, so I always want to say Odin, oh. Sean, Jeremy, but it's not the way it's supposed to go. Jeremy, Sean, Odin, Martin E., Merrick Camp, Josh Lee, J-Dog, Peter A., Crucible, Dark Bandit 6, and the, and the new guy, Vlad A. Thanks for everybody for, who has subscribed. If you haven't already, hit the, you know, the, the thing at the bottom that has mm -hmm. the subscribe button on it. Yeah, that's it's the subscribe button, Tyler. If that's what you know how to yeah. actually talk. Yeah. Uh like like, subscribe, all that nonsense. Subscribe to Janie's to to, to, Chaney, to Chaney's channel. Chaney. Yeah. You, Dick you, Chaney you, over you here. Into you know, Dick Chaney. Just... Yeah. <laughs> 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 God. Check out Cheney's channel. Thank God this podcast is over. Man has lost it. It's gone. Any talent he had at doing these kind of things has just floated out the window. All of a, su all of a sudden, we're trying to pimp out Dick Cheney's personal YouTube channel. <laughs> if Dick Ch Cheney has a YouTube channel, I'm stopping the whole YouTube thing. Yeah. Obviously, this platform was not for me. Anyway. We, we have to move to a new one. <laughs> Anyways, check out Zany's YouTube channel, uh, youtube.com slash ZanyOG. We will see you next week. If you want to watch us live, we record this live usually on Thursdays around 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern time. Uh, for Tyler, who doesn't apparently know what time zones are, that's 1 p.m. Yep. Colorado time. Um, <laughs> God, I am such an asshole today. <laughs> that was so toxic, man. <laughs> no, I mean, luckily you did send me the message like right at like right at when we were supposed to be going live because I was like, oh, like I mean, I was getting prepared. Like I'm like I'm like an hour ahead. I'm like you, I'm keeping you, track you of what it right is. You were right on time, but really you were late, <laughs> just like you always are. Um, yep. Although you're like three weeks in a row sending me your audio like right after the show, I don't know what I I, I can't handle that kind of, that kind of punctuality. Mm -hmm. Anyways, that is it for us this time. We'll see you next time. Boy.